Hashin and Tomi scamper through the back roads along sensor guy with white sneakers and pumps slapping on the pavement. Hachi kept his eyes peeled, continually checking ahead and behind as they darted through the gas between the buildings. <coughs> Finally, they stopped in a narrow alley. There's no way you'll find us here, he said. No one knows about this place. They took another look around, then all let out a sigh of relief. It seemed they'd managed to shake the gunman for now. Back when Hachi was with SOS, he had come through Sensor Guy practically every day. Abbreviation for Studs of Shibuya, the name given to the group of Achi when he founded it. Originally just a bunch of like-minded young people hanging out together, it has since become known as the gang that picks fights around Shibuya. The gang started out as a little more than a group of local teens. They didn't do much in particular, just horsing around and killing time. What mattered was that they were having fun. <clears throat> it wasn't long before it wasn't all fun and games. Ash couldn't help but notice the slobs who were making a mess of Shibuya, dirtying it all up. He wasn't about to let them get away with it. Most frequently, it was folks who tossed cigarette butts out on the street of plastic walls and graffiti. When they didn't respond to his more gentle warnings, he found slightly more forceful ways of getting his point across. And so has got a reputation. Street punks started trying to pick fights with its members. Those guys required a bit more force to handle. When it came to the worst of the lot, the drug dealers, the muggers, the guys who tried to force themselves on women, it was full-on battle, no holds barred. Before long, SOS had established itself as something of a vigilante corps. Soon it became known as one of the biggest gangs in Shibuya. I'll stay low here for a bit and see what happens, Sachi said. The alley where they had hid was like a dimly lit chasm obscuring them from view. The only problem now was figuring out what to do next. They needed to find that blue van again, which meant figuring out the best way to get back to Doken Saka without the man with the cane catching them once more. Achi, tell me, whispered. Hmm? I think I can handle myself from here. She got to her feet and gave Achi a deep bow. Whoa, Achi held up a hand. We've been over this already. You're not gonna be okay. That guy has a gun. If he let her go up against that assassin alone, he might as well be the one to pull the trigger himself. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me, he told me continued as if she hadn't heard him. She started to shuffle out of the alleyway. Hey, what did I just say? Really, Yachi, I appreciate your concern, but I can't in good conscience put you in danger anymore. <laughs> but I mean, I just tried to press the point, but Tatomi cut him off. There's no good reason for you to risk yourself to keep helping me. Her tone was resolute, but Achi was determined to help her anyway, he refused to back down. Achi knew she had a point, he decided to back off. Uh... Still, Achi was determined to help her anyway, he refused to back down. Look, I want to help people who are in trouble. What's so wrong about that? Huh? He locked eyes with the tummy, willing, willing her to understand. I'm not the most dependable guy, I know that. But still, I just... Tommy dropped your gaze and Nachi trailed off feeling like an idiot. Oh, it's no use. I'm no use. He hung his head with a sigh. Just then a bit of light shone into the alleyway from above. Looked like someone on the adjacent building upper floor had turned on the lights. <laughs> The Nokane building, this multi-tenant building at seven floors, but a decade old urban legends tells of a mysterious 13th floor. A diet and aid cells demo is being held on one of the upper floors today. I don't have her yet. Just right off the bat, I can already jump to her. Jeez, okay. Well, she is next. The light illuminated Tommy's face. When Nachi saw the look in her eyes, she reconsidered his decision. She was trying her hardest to hide it, but she was clearly terrified. No way was he letting her go back out there alone. Still, if he tried to insist, she would only refuse him again. Hey, Tommy, humor me for a second here. Tell me, what is the proper way to dispose of a plastic bottle? She stared at him in surprise. Uh, well, first you remove the cap and the wrapper. Then you rinse out the inside and crush it. Uh, she let out the breath he'd been holding. Okay, good. Huh? I, I don't understand. What's good? Give me my reason why I have to help you out. I super respect people who respect their environment. I'm one of those watch and call it an environmentalist. Achi pointed at his mean clean t-shirt. Tell me as it did it. What was your plan if I said the answer was to toss the plastic and worth the trash? Well, then I'd need to stick with you to help teach you. <laughs> Environmental awareness begins with good education. So then you were going to tag along with me regardless? Look, I'm just super pumped to learn that you care so much about proper recycling. I'll just crack the huge grin. Okay then. Okay. If you 
you really that sure about it? I guess I could use your help a little while longer. Tommy flashed him a little smile. Man, she's so cute, Archie thought. Cute. Then something else caught his eye. Huh? What's that there? It looked like something black was stuck on the top of her head. Archie, what are you staring at? Oh, you've got something stuck there. What on my head? Without thinking, it's time we reached up and plucked it off. No, I was about to say the meter's wrong. <laughs> His body a glistening black, sporting feelers and several pairs of legs. It began to writhe and wriggle between the Tommy's slender fingers. Ah, she helped. It's a cockroach. <laughs> he jumped backward, but the Tommy didn't so much as flinch. Ooh, sorry. That gave me a bit of a start. He continued. Guess it must have fallen from one of the windows up there. Still, Tommy did not move. Yeah, she, she's uh, Tommy. She didn't appear to hear him. Uh, hello, Tommy. Uh, with muffled gurgle, Tommy passed out on the spot. Her body is stiff as a mannequin. <laughs> oh no! What? Tommy, are you okay? Uh oh! Tommy! 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 <laughs> but no matter how loudly Archie called her name, Tommy would not come to. Did she die of fright? Some of these endings. From that day onward, Achi devoted even more of his time and energy to collecting trash. It became his personal passion to see that his city was a clean one, devoid of cockroaches. <laughs> What's up with these endings? That was the mandate he had been handed, or if nothing else, his atonement. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Bad end. Number 19, the cockroach. The Tommy passed out after a cockroach fell onto her head from out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere exactly. The Tommy and Nachi were right underneath the Nocane building where they're selling Burning Hammer. A cat and a cockroach had been fighting it out on one of the upper floors. The cat was victorious, but if it had run away instead, things would have turned out differently down below. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus Christ, these endings. <laughs> 